concepts we used to have different virtualization softwares like VMware or anything and we used to make images so that we can deploy to our infrastructure and we use tools, uh, some advanced tools like Packer uh, to create a particular image that could be deployed on AWS, DigitalOcean or you know any of the providers. So this was a earlier concept that will be used to deal with. So this is somewhat like Docker. What Docker introduced was the containerization at large scale. What happened was it was not new that the, container, uh, the containerization concept was in introduced by Docker. So this uh, is a false information. The containerization or the microservices have been used by Google and Netflix like big companies for, from over a decade actually. So what Docker wanted to introduce was a simple method to adopt the containerization part. That's what Docker came for. That's why when uh, Solomon Hikes, the creator of uh, Docker, started in the PyCon, he showed that, okay, uh, you can deploy this application on a container, and uh, he told that with Docker it is so easy to transform. Without Docker, how hard it could be, that's another part of the question. So this is somewhat like life after Docker. As you could see that we have our containers, one, two, three, and we have our next uh, Node.js or MongoDB, all three allow, uh, different different parts and uh, we have connected to the cloud. So basically the outstream, the layout of the whole infrastructure has been changed with the introduction of Docker. So that's why Docker is so popular these days and that's why so many companies are adopting it. So uh, then uh, another question like are the containers new in the market? So the answer is simply no. Because these containers have been adopted by many companies as, as I said before. And these are some of the uh, different solutions that are present in the market except Docker. One I forgot to mention is Rocket by CoreOS. Uh, so it is another solution which you can use except Docker. If you don't know Docker, no problem, you can use these alternatives also. Uh, how is Docker different from the Linux container? Uh, Docker basically, Docker basically does this part. Docker engine. This is the core and important part of Docker. It manages all the containers on your application from you know uh, from your server to anything, and it connects to your operating system. This is the part that differentiates Docker from other containers. Other containers do not have that much good uh, in, uh, good. Uh, what say build up? Uh, that's why Docker rules basically. Even like CoreOS, they started with Rocket and they used ACI images, that is application container images, and they have reached right now on the production uh, ready environments. So it is a good uh, choice if you want to switch over with Docker. If you don't want to uh, involve with Docker, like I, I give you an example. Uh, there is a company called BlaBlaCar. Uh, so they use Rocket in their production servers, they do not use Docker. So that's why they said that, okay, if you don't want to use Docker, but Rocket is a very good alternative that they find out from security point of view. That's their uh, principle, that's their thing. But, uh, yeah. oh, which other operating system it supports? Mm -hmm. uh, Docker? Mm -hmm. It supports a variety of different, uh, it supports Rancher OS, uh, it supports Core OS, it supports Ubuntu, it supports uh, Debian, it supports CentOS, whole lot of it. Because the operating systems that are present in the market or have been present in the market are made by same fundamental principles that are uh, you know present over uh, before a decade and after. Decade. And this operate this hypervisor you have written above the operating system. Yeah, it can be on the lower layer also. Right? No, uh, this hypervisor is uh, for the virtualization part that I wish to. Only which hypervisor? Uh, this one. No. This is which type of hypervisor? This is just a uh, demonstration. Like this could be any type of hypervisor. You can either use like you know virtual uh, VMware or any sort of software that you can use. But this is just a depiction of how we are differentiating uh, between things. But if we use VMware, then the operating system is not any. It's not required. If we use high VMware exercise, then operating system is not required. No, like, uh, 
Okay, so Docker storage. Okay, so one of the questions is like, I have a different infrastructure, not uh, let's say 64 bit, not 32 bit, not or anything. So how does Docker work on my machine? That is one of the questions. So by default, the kernel, the Linux kernel provides two basic, very standard uh, storage options. That is the device mapper and the AUFS. So it interacts with your AUFS and device mapper for the default. But in case if it doesn't found, uh, finds that uh, these storage uh, devices, then it goes to the BFS, ZFS, overlay or GTRS. These are the other options that have been added from Docker, uh, I guess 1.17 or something. So that's how Docker is distributed over a wide layout of different uh, architectures, apps, and uh, like just said, uh, we have Raspberry Pi and uh, various sort of micro uh, these. Microprocessors. So the, uh, Docker could be run on these things if AUFS or device mapper is not even present. Here. So that is the advantage that Docker gives. Okay, a little bit about security. Uh, like when I started uh, a year before this, uh, there were there were many concerns about Docker security. The reason was quite simple, uh, as people have observed that the containers are not very secured as compared to the OS layers. The reason is because you have a API calling to your container and you are not even using any sort of uh, CA certificates or any sort of encryption on it. Right? So it becomes a problematic when you are dealing with containers into the production. So that is the thing that uh, basically Docker started analyzing and it started improving its Docker security part. It introduced some of the uh, basic stuff like App Armor. It is just like SE Linux. So it works uh, on your containers for better security. And these are just some other tools that Docker has been experimented with. Mm -hmm. Recently, uh, if you have uh, gone through the version 1.11, that is the latest release, they have even used SecCom for uh, various profiling methods of Docker. So Docker is regularly improving its security so that the companies won't have any uh, issue uh, regarding uh, using Docker. So this is now Docker image. So Docker container is very much different and Docker image is very much different. You uh, can create and destroy a container, but for, a, uh, for you to create an image or to pull an image, it requires something else. I mean to say that uh, you can pull any image onto a container and run it, that is fine. But if you want to destroy destroy the image uh, properly, then you have to do something. So basically, just, this is just an example. Like you have your operating system on which you are uh, taking uh, things, like Busybox or Debian, and you write a container on it, and this is the image that you are using. That is the Busybox image. So this is what I am uh, describing, like what is the difference between image and the container that, uh, that we are uh, dealing with. So image can be add on as you have started using Docker, but uh, the thing is you cannot uh, increase your containers uh, just on basis of these images. I will demonstrate it later, but uh, right for now this is the architecture how the images are placed one layer above another. I'm sorry, but isn't it should be a project? Just go back to the previous mm -hmm. slide. Mm -hmm. uh, our container should directly interact with the kernel rather than the images. No, a container needs some basic prerequisites. Like I said, uh, it needs C groups. It needs uh, that uh, app armor, such sort of things, namespaces. So where uh, would it take it, right? It would take it from kernel, that is all right. But it needs an OS to run its uh, applications or, or to build up its environment. Like when I build, uh, when I use Docker file, if you have heard of. So we, have, we use a Docker file and we uh, specifically specify there, okay, this is from this uh, JSC, right? Right. right? So we use that particular components to create our environment because if we, uh, to use only the kernel uh, uh, no, so not, not the kernel but uh, what I mean to see here say, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here so the writable container that you are speaking about it is something that what we known as a docker engine which directly interacts with your kernel 
and then your images come into the picture because uh, the images interacts with your Docker engine, and further uh, Docker engine interacts to your kernel. So like this. No, uh, actually the Docker images and the Docker containers are not interacting directly. They require a daemon uh, to go through. Yeah. And the daemon is the one that manages everything. Okay. okay, so that's why when I uh, depicted that workflow, mm -hmm. that Docker daemon is the one that is pulling those registries, pulling your images, writing down images. The Docker one is the one that is interacting with your outside services. Docker daemon is the one that uh, is you know maintaining the workflow. That's why uh, if you have you know started something, uh, you have installed Docker daemon, you might get an error where it says that Docker daemon is not uh, correctly set to the uh, set to its path. So this is one common error that you know when we start using Docker we get this. So why does this error occur? Because Docker daemon you have installed Docker but you have not set the correct path for Docker to fetch the images and to uh, call the uh, consecutive uh, registry outside. So that is one common error that is uh, that occurs because of this Docker. So, I, I mean we will we'll take it offline but I still disagree. Okay. What are you saying? Okay, so these are just some commands. So basically, this one is uh, very important. Basically, when you try installing Docker on your Ubuntu machines, what happens is you have to run every time sudo, which is uh, like for the root uh, powers, right? So basically, the purpose of Docker was not to use the root power and to uh, you know use a particular uh, user. A user can actually just you know use a container. That was its purpose. So what has to be done to correct that? So basically you create a group of docker in which you register your name, your identity using who am I and this docker groups give you the uh, privileges of a root container, uh, of a root using which you can run up your containers, you can uh, pull down registries and you can do stuff. So that is a uh, one step you can do. But uh, it also has a negative uh, disadvantage that it uh, you know gives a huge exposure to the security because you are creating a group if someone hacks or you know gets into your security group or changes something so then he has control over your uh, whole docker setup so this is also a uh, security issue okay. Like this thing, uh, does anyone know how to do this? Smith, you forgot to go. You forgot to go. So like uh, just a rough overview, like um, here are my containers and this is the information like it's using the EUFS driver. This is the plugins, like it gives you everything here. here, here this is my EUFS driver that I'm using and uh, whatever content that you are having This is the content that whatever uh, you are doing with the Docker gets stored here. 
that is your TUFS, we have something as your images, your network, your temporary files, everything that you want to offer basically from the root is set. Subal font bada me. So, control shift plus more. Control shift plus more. Okay. 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 So, what's that for you? So, this is how you can, you know, verify your stuff, whatever you are doing. Thank you. 